Welcome to Daryl's Beekeeping Videos, where I teach beekeepers of all skill levels about the art and science of beekeeping. I'm a master beekeeper, and my articles have been published many times in magazines such as American Bee Journal, Bee Culture, Beekeeping Your First Three Years, and the Bee Buzz. Now let's get on with the lesson. Okay, so now I'm out in the apiary. This is my uh, second part of doing a hive inspection. And I've completed my pre-hive inspection checklist. And I'll have a link to it. Uh, that'll probably be a separate video. But uh, if I have room, I'll put it down in the description as well. If not, I'll have a, a link to either the description or to the other video. So basically the, pre, the general concept of pre-hive inspections is off camera, I've got a plastic tote with everything that I anticipate that I might need during an inspection. So this is newspaper for uh, if I need to combine a weak colony. I've got a uh, spare mineral, spare, spare beetle traps in that tote box as, as well as straps and some other things that again I might need depending on what I see once I get in there. I have a pair of one and a half power reading glasses on to help me spot the eggs. I have a small LED flashlight to again help me spot eggs and then I also have a complete empty spare hive uh, in case I want to do a split or anything like that and then in addition to that my technique is instead of using a frame perch uh, which is this device, this holds about three frames. The only thing I use this for is if I want to take a photo of something, um, I'll use that. Basically, it sets on the side of your hive body. But again, I don't use it unless I want to take a photo of something. I much prefer to use a spare deep hive body and a, and a spare lid. In this case, I have two because I've got two hive bodies and I have the equipment, so it's just handy to have. I'll use one of the spare hive bodies once I find the queen. I will actually isolate her in one of those boxes on that frame just to make it easier for me whenever I get ready to put it back in. So uh, now on to the actual inspections itself. Uh, so when you get ready to do your inspections, you want to use your senses as you, even as you start to approach. So as you approach, you want to start looking at the hive and see uh, what the bees are doing. In this case, if you can see them in the camera, they're just simply doing a series of orientation flights coming in and out. You'll see bees coming in with pollen and nectar. Uh, goldenrod is in season right now. Um, when I'm doing an inspection, I wanna make sure that the temperature is at least 64 degrees or higher and it's not raining so that I'm not worrying about uh, causing the bees to have hypothermia. Uh, I also have my uh, part of my pre-inspection I have my smoker already lit I do that before before I put my hive suit on so I don't burn my hive suit and put a hole in it all right so again as I'm approaching the hive I want to check and see what the bees are doing are they being aggressive am I seeing a lot of bees uh, fighting at the entrance am I seeing bees coming and trying to get in every little crack that's an indication of robbing seeing bees fighting at, at the front entrance or bees trying to get in uh, the various cracks in this case, the bees are just calmly going in circles, orientation flights, and again, occasionally you'll see bees coming in with pollen and nectar. Um, so the next thing I want to do, as I get closer to the hive, I want to, pay, again, pay attention to your, your senses. What am I seeing on the outside of the hive? When I approach, I want to approach from the sides and the back whenever possible, and I want to stay out of the front of the hive as much as I can so that I'm not in visual range of the guard bees and I'm also not in the flight path of the bees as they come out they'll typically come out about six feet and then fly up to flying out to wherever they're going usually it's about 12 to 20 feet in the air um, so again I'm looking on the outside I'm looking for in this case I got a small ant out there if I see a few ants I'm not going to wild out get wild out about small ants uh, small amounts now if I have hundreds of ants coming in then that requires a different uh, remedy I'll have to take care of uh, in case in my case I've got hive stands with uh, with uh, metal dog bowl moats at salt dog bowl moats uh, that solves the problem for my ants occasionally I'll have a few get past it when those dry out it's not a big deal um, so as I approach I'm looking for poop or anything like that uh, honeybee poop will look like a thin brown or uh, thin speck of brown poop 
uh, again, just looks like a streak. If I see a lot of that on the outside of my colony, uh, or outside the hive, the hives where they live, the colony of the actual bees, if I see a lot of that, then I'll have to take a mental note when I actually get inside, then I want to check and see if there's a lot of poop inside. Um, so again, I make a 360. Again, I just peek around the front, see if I see anything weird going on in the front. Uh, so from there, I'm ready to actually start the inspection where I go inside. So first thing I want to do is I want to take my smoker and I want to lightly put a few puffs of smoke at the front entrance. What that's going to do is that's going to um, mask the alarm pheromones of the guard bees. The next thing I want to do is I want to take a hive tool and I want to go above the highest part of the uh, hive body. I'm just going to pop that up. And you're going to see bees come out. That's okay. I'm going to give a few good puffs in there. Again, I'm not trying to barbecue the bees, but I'm just trying to mask the alarm pheromones. And then I'm going to set it back down, try not to crush bees as much as I can. Um, because when you crush the bees, you actually release their alarm pheromones uh, when you crush their, their uh, venom sac. Um, so in this case, uh, I didn't crush any bees, not a big deal. I'm going to let that settle in for about 20 to 30 seconds, just to let that smoke filter through the hive and help mask those alarm pheromones. Um, next thing I'm going to do when I'm ready to inspect the hive, I'm going to lift the hive top up. I may take a quick peek underneath just to make sure there's no wax moths or hive beetles. Um, and then I'm going to set this down. Again, I can set it on the ground or I could set it, on my case, I've got, I've got these eight foot long hive stands. They're perfect. I love these things. So then I'm going to, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look in a hive top feeder if I've got one on there. Uh, I love these Miller hive top feeders because they can hold uh, about a gallon and a half to three gallons of, of syrup, depending on uh, how deep they are and whether it's an eight frame or 10 frame. I'm going to look in here, see if I see any hive beetles or ants. In this case, I don't. Uh, again, if I had some ants, I may crush them. Um, not a big deal. So now I'm going to lift this off and set it aside. All right, when you set your equipment aside, you don't put it directly on the ground. So if you have to, even if you had a frame or something like that, the concept's still the same. You basically want to put it on its end so that you aren't getting um, dirt and grass and putting it inside the hive. In this case, um, I've got room out here, so I'm just going to put it on another spare hive body. Oh, excuse me, on top of another uh, hive stand. Um, so then I want to look in my brood chambers. In this case, I've got a honey super and two brood chambers. And I want to scan down in here and see where the bees are. and give me an idea of what the food stores are. And then I want to see, um, again, where the brood uh, is. In this case, it's a honey super. There's nothing in here. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to simply pop off one of these um, beetle blaster beetle traps. It's one of these little disposable. These are the best ones I've found. Uh, when you do it, you want to take and you want to rotate the fluid. They should be about half full of mineral oil. When you do it, you want to check and make sure that this mineral oil is free flowing. If it's not, if it's become jellied a little bit, then you simply toss it and replace it. These are about $2 um, from your local bee store or on Amazon, you can get them cheap as well. And then I'm gonna set it aside. Next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna simply push all my frames off to the side and I've got a separate video on how to use a hive tool. So again, I'm just gonna push these off to the side because I can see there's not a whole lot in there. I've got a dead bee, so I'm just getting rid of it. Um, I'm going to move out the outer frame first and pull it out and lift it out. And again, I see there's nothing in it. What I'm looking for real quick here is uh, small high beetles crawling around. So again, I'm going to do this fairly quickly because these are all empty, it looks like. Again, I'm okay there. And because these are empty, I'm not worried. They're not heavy because it's just drawn comb. Um, I can kind of treat these a little different. If I had a brood frame, I wouldn't flip it up like this because there's a chance all that weight of the honey or the brood can actually cause the, the comb to fall out. In this case, I know that they're empty. Uh, so I'm just gonna quickly check it. And again, I'll show you how to actually inspect those uh, when you're, you're just basically looking at them horizontally. Again, this is gonna be fairly quickly because I know that there's nothing in here. And my smoker fell on the ground. And once I get enough frames cleared, I could actually just slide them over. Again, I don't see any high beetles, just a quick gander. Anytime you see um, just foundation, there's not gonna be high beetles or wax moths on those because I'm not interested in that. 
uh, hive beetles are after the pollen and nectar and the wax moths are after the cocoons. All right, so again, this one's, last one's nothing more than foundation, so I've quickly gone through that. So just that quick, I can go through this box. Um, again, if I was really in a hurry, I wouldn't even necessarily worry about this top box as I saw when I peeked through it that there's nothing. Again, I'm putting the frames back in the order that they came in, especially if it's a brood chamber. You want those so you don't disrupt the brood order. All right, so now I just simply take this and I pop it off and I can place it anywhere I want. Uh, in this case, I'm just gonna put it on this spare high body that I have. And then my practice is, uh, I'm probably off camera now, but that's okay. Um, I'm simply going to take my beetle trap and place it back in uh, as soon as I set it off to the side so that I don't forget that it's there. And I've forgotten to put them back in the colony many a times. So again, now I'm getting into where I'm seeing brood uh, or at least bees that are clustered on the frames are mostly on this side. At some point, uh, you're gonna start seeing them come out um, and we call that boiling bees when they come up, that's a good sign. So again, I got a beetle trap here uh, and I've got about uh, five or six dead adult small high beetles. They look like black ladybugs. Um, so again, I'm just gonna set this down. I'm gonna try to remember to keep that upright. Sometimes I'll put a brick down so that I can lean that up against the brick um, and keep the mineral oil from spilling out. In this case, I had room in that spare uh, honey super. I just put it on in between one of those. I'll remember to get it a little later. All right, so the next thing I wanna do is I wanna push all the frames off to the side. A good technique, in my opinion, is to, when you get ready to close up the hive, after you're doing the inspection, is push all the frames off to one side anyway. Some beekeepers like to center the frames. I personally like to just push them off to the side so that way whenever I get ready to inspect the hive again, I'm ready to go again. I don't have to push them, they're already there. Um, in this case, they're already there. But if I had to, I could just simply hold on to it and then push. You never want to, you never want to take your hive tool and push between a frame and an outer wall of your hive body simply because you could crack the um, outer wall of your high body and this is about a $15 if you were buy it uh, and then or not make it yourself this is about a $15 device vices a uh, dollar to two dollar frame so always not push against the outer wall so the next thing I'm gonna do is again I'm seeing the bees come up They're they're very calm at this point so there's no reason to smoke them I, again where I've done the initial so I'm just gonna use my hive tool and I've got a separate video on how to use hive tools um, so I'm gonna lift it up, use it, putting the J hook in between the frame in bar and the high wall. I'm gonna pull it. I'm gonna level it back out. I'm gonna put straight up in the air now. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, if I've got good sunlight, I'm gonna simply put the sun over my shoulder. I'm gonna quickly look around the, the frame in a 360 looking for the queen. Uh, in this case, I can see that this is all uncapped honey, so she's not gonna be on here. Um, and then I hold, rotate the frame around, having positive control with my hand with my hands at all times. Um, I just rotate it horizontally. Remember, I told you about early in the video not to flip it up horizontally because if I did that and I had an unsupported frame, unwired frame, I could run the risk of dumping out. Plus, if you have un, uh, a really watery nectar uh, that's not fully cured honey yet, uh, I could actually dump it out and basically I've caused the bees extra work. So in this case, it's nothing more than a honey frame, so not a big deal. Um, Again, in uh, my hive tool uh, video, I show you that I mark all my tops of my uh, frames with a single line so that it basically keeps them oriented, helps me keep them oriented. You wanna mark that before you ever put the frame in the hive uh, to begin with. So it's because once the bees, once you put it in there, the bees are gonna coat all the uncoated surfaces with uh, a thin layer of propolis. All right, so again, uh, it's warm weather, so I don't have to worry about going down in between the the frames tabs, again, I'll just show you again, it's in that one video, uh, how to use a hive tool. Um, but if again, if it's colder weather, I would simply run it in this hive tool down between the frames just to keep from splitting off the end bars uh, tabs. In this case, it's warm weather, it's 84 degrees or so, um, 80, 84 degrees. Um, so I don't have to worry about that because the propolis is kind of like uh, chewing gum at that point. It's very pliable and very sticky. Um, so again, from there, I just slide the frame over a little bit and then I can pull it straight up if I want to, if I can grab it with my fingers or I could use my J hook like I showed you before. Again, giving a quick gander. Um, 
again, I'd put it where the sun's over my back. I've got a cloudy day today, so uh, mostly cloudy. It's got some broken clouds. Again, this is nothing more than capped and uncapped honey. If you're having a hard time spinning it, you can see one technique is hold it positive one hand and then just put it on top of a frame and then rotate it around if you have to to maintain positive control of the frame. Again, I'm doing 360s just to make sure the queen's not on here. Again, this is all uh, capped and uncapped honey and some bee bread. Bee, bee bread is nothing more than uh, pollen with honey or nectar mixed in with it. Uh, again, so there's nothing on here but food stores. Again, you always want to put the frames in back in, in the order that you got them from. So every time you do an inspection, you uh, set the honeybees back about three days, especially when you're messing with the broods or figuring out where the brood, the brood is that you've moved. Uh, if the bees start to get in your way like this, you see them starting to pop up. So either I can smoke them or I can just take my hive tool and just lightly wiggle it back and forth and they'll get the hint and they'll move down. Or conversely, I can simply blow, reach down and go and blow them with my breath. It, it makes them mad a little bit. Um, but again, not a big deal. Um, they'll move out of the way. So in this case, you saw I just slid the frame over. This is quite a heavy frame, so that tells me that it's mostly full of honey, and it really is. So again, do my 360, and as I do my 360, uh, I do it 360 on the outside, then I do a concentric circle, smaller and smaller circles, until I get to the center of the frame. Uh, again, looking for various things. And again, once I get to a brood chamber frame, a brood frame, I will actually describe what I'm seeing. Um, again, this is nothing more than honey. So again, not a big deal. So I'm going to put it in a box. And in theory, once I've got enough space, about three frames, out, I could actually simply slide the frames over and not have to use a spare high body. But I like this because if I wanted to, when I get totally all these frames out, I could actually just take this box and put it back in its place or I can move the frames back one at a time like I'm doing. Uh, your choice. So again, I'm just lightly moving things aside. Again, try not to bang things around because the more you bang things around, it's going to make the bees mad uh, when you do it. You wouldn't want somebody banging around in your house. Uh, again, so I can quickly see uh, that there's nothing but honey on that side. Nothing but honey and bee bread on this side. Again, I'm gonna put it back in the orientation that it was at. Again, that's where those lines come in handy. Again, as I'm doing it, I'm pushing the frames up against each other. Pull it out. This one's mostly foundation, some drawn comb, and some drawn comb on this side. It takes about six to eight pounds of honey or nectar to make one pound of beeswax. Um, just a little beginner's fact that you will need to know if you ever take any part of the master beekeeping exams, either certified or higher. Um, it's one of the questions you may or may not see. All right, so again, I'm pulling it out. And again, I'm seeing nothing but um, capped and uncapped honey. Capped and uncapped honey, no brood, no queen, no small high beetles, no wax moss. So again, it's quick, it's easy. I'm not banging stuff around. I'm not making the bees mad. There's, this is still a very calm hive. I'm getting a lot of bees coming up toward the top now. Again, not a big deal. Again, just wiggle my hive tool. They'll get a hint and they'll move out of the way. They're just curious of what's going on with our home. All right, so again, I pull it straight up. Nothing but capped honey and uh, bee bread. A little bit of uncapped honey. I'm seeing darker collared capping on the honey. That's well, that's called old honey. Uh, it's or wet cappings as they call it. It's not a big deal, still perfectly edible. Uh, brand new honeycomb cappings will be white. Um, again, it's perfectly usable. The bees will still consume it. Not a big deal. I got an ant crawling on the outside, so I'll just kill him. All right, so now I'm to my last frame. I just move it over the way. Excuse me, girls. My girls are very polite, so I have to use please and thank you a lot with them. Excuse me. And they seem to respond to that a lot. I'm just joking, of course. All right, so again, on this frame, it's nothing more than uh, capped and uncapped honey. Positive control, maintaining, try to maintain two to three fingers on control at a time while I flip it around horizontally. And again, nothing on here. Uh, so far, I'm only seeing workers. I haven't seen any drones. All right, so again, I put them straight in. I slide it over. Those of you who have 10 frame boxes, um, it's going to be a lot tighter spaces, whereas an 8 frame box 
they almost they put a little too much space on it they've gone to one extreme to the other uh, so as a result when i push my frames over to one side i can generally expect burr comb to be built on the side wall the disadvantage that is as i lift that frame up i run the risk of that burr comb tearing into the um, comb that i have uh, especially if it's capped honey all right so i'm gonna put this down because i've got some bees are on this frame box now i'm just going to gently raise it up and down and it's set all right so i've got a lot of bees on here now um, and i forgot to put my um, beetle trap on there again not a big deal i just simply put it in lightly put it at an angle when you put it in and out so that you're not spilling the um, mineral so i've got bees coming out pretty decent now so they're kind of getting them away so i'm going to use the smoke for one or two things i'm going to either use it for uh, gen uh, gently just a few lint, uh, light smokes uh, and again, I'm not trying to barbecue the bees. I'm simply causing them to go away. So smoke um, masks their alarm pheromones. It also uh, causes them to go away from the area where the smoke is. They think there's a fire going. Uh, so they actually may start consuming honey. So again, I'm just going to take this beetle trap, lift it up slightly, and then pull it back and up and out uh, so that I pull it out. Again, as I do it, I'm checking. I've got probably about a half dozen small high beetle adults. Again, I just simply set this off to the side and keep it upright so I'm not spilling anything. Again, my technique is, is when I put the uh, beetle traps in, if I have one on the left side in the rear, the next box I'll have it in the right rear and just alternate. So that way if the small high beetle thinks it's being slick and knows where the beetle trap is, he goes up there or she goes up there uh, and the next box she goes up and, and the honeybees are waiting for it and they'll drive them inside. Uh, the small high, small high beetles see that dark uh, top of the beetle trap and they go in there thinking they're safe and they get uh, mixed in with the uh, mineral and drown and you don't have to worry about them anymore all right so again um, bees are starting to come back out again again this is a very calm colony so again I'm gonna put my hive tool in just kind of pry it up a little bit I'm in a little bit of a rush today no matter take my time a little bit more when I'm spraying this but we do have a rain coming in this afternoon so I'm trying to beat that um, just why I do this video. So again, I pull it straight up, and now I'm seeing uh, pollen, uncapped honey, no drones yet. It's all workers, and remember the uh, workers will chase the drones out as it starts to get toward winter, um, or when there's little resources. Uh, so I don't see any drones. I, oh, there's one. Um, He's running around here. You can't see it from that far away. Again, this is all stored food, so not a big deal. So again, I'll just simply put it back in the order that I found it because on the box here, all my lines are on this end and I moved that frame first. I'm going to simply put it back in the order I got here so that I'm ready to go uh, whenever I get ready to put it back in. Again, just gently pull it up. So far, I've only had uh, food stores. I haven't had any brood. Um, all right, so now I've got brood. I've got a nice solid pattern of brood. So what I'm looking for now is I'm looking at, uh, I'm doing my 360 to see if I see the queen trying to dart to the other side, especially a young queen, she will dart to one side. Again, remember I'm putting this frame up above my shoulder a little bit so that I get sunlight directly into the bottom of that flat portion of the cells. If I can't see, then I'm gonna simply take my light it fell on the ground and then what i can do if i need to i can simply take and rest one end of the frame on the ground and then from there i can look in the bottom of the cells with my light and wiggle my frame around if i need to then i don't even need to worry about the sunlight so what i'm looking for again i do the quick 360 around looking for the queen concentric circles going in so smaller and smaller looking for the queen i'm also looking for um, honey up in the corners along the top and then the next layer in next band in is I'm looking for uh, it's where they'll typically have pollen and then I'm looking for the brood area itself when I see nice flat small diameter cells those are all worker cells um, I see some holes that are here that's normal that could either be uh, an adult that's emerged or the bees, there are a certain percentage of hygienic bees in every colony, so maybe they've sensed something wrong with the pupae or the larvae, and they've simply removed either the pupae or larvae. Typically what that is, they might smell a varroa mite. 
um, or again, a diseased uh, uh excuse me, a diseased uh, larvae or pupae, and they'll simply remove it and get rid of it. All right, so next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start looking at the, I'm looking for eggs, and I'm also looking for the larvae. The larvae are the little, you should see the larvae as bright white or pearly white, as we say. Um, so as I'm looking, if I see yellow to brown larvae, where I can see uh, visible white lines on the larvae, that's a good indication of European fowl brood. It's a bacteria that um, uh, causes uh, disease. And again, if it's light brown to brown uh, with visible white lines, that's a good indication of European fowl brood. It will also have a smell. Remember I was telling about using your senses? Um, it will have a smell like old cheese or old, uh, I've also heard it described as old uh, wet socks. Um, so again, in this case, these are all pearly white um, larvae. And now uh, what I'm looking for when I see the eggs, there should be a single egg vertically in the center of the bottom of the cell. Remember that for, flat portion of the cell? I'm looking in there, see I only have one egg. In this case, I've got plenty of eggs in here um, on the periphery. Um, so when I see eggs, I'm no longer worried about seeing the queen because I know she's been there in three days. And if the bees had to, if you take nothing else away from this, this video, take away the fact that you can relax. Once you see you have eggs in worker cells and you have at least three frames of brood, you can simply relax because if you inadvertently kill the queen, they can emer make an emergency queen should they need to. Remember when the queen lays an egg, she determines the sex, whether it's a male or female. And then the workers then determine whether that young larvae is going to become a queen or as a worker based on its diet that they feed it. Um, if it's going to be a queen, they're going to feed it constant royal jelly. It's like a white cream. Um, and if it's a worker, they'll change the diet after about three days and they'll make it a mixture of pollen and honey um, or nectar and honey, either one. Um, and it becomes by diet, it then becomes a uh, just a worker instead of a queen. All right, so again, I see nothing but good brood here. No uh, drone cells so far. Drone cells uh, will stick up kind of like a tip of a bullet. They'll stick up uh, further than the rest of the cells around it. Um, and they'll also be wider. So now I'm going to simply rotate this around. I'm looking for the queen on the other side. And again, my eyes immediately go to the bottom and to the sides and go in a 360 looking for the queen just to see if she's in here. And again, looking for eggs. I'm looking for small high beetles. I'm looking for wax moths. Wax moths are kind of a gray small wa uh, wa um, moth. And then when I see eggs, Again, there should only be one egg in each cell. If you have two eggs, that's not necessarily a bad thing um, because sometimes a young queen will lay two eggs or sometimes even in a queen right colony, which means you have a good laying queen, uh, mated queen in your colony, sometimes you'll have a laying worker in there as well uh, where her ovaries will develop somehow and she will go in there and lay eggs. Don't sweat it because again, if you're only seeing a couple eggs, it's not a big deal because the workers can sense, can smell the difference between an egg laid by a queen, or deposited is the correct term, or an egg deposited by a worker, and they will remove the second egg. Um, they will remove the worker's eggs when they, can tell, when they can tell that a worker has laid it, or if a queen has laid it, they'll remove one of the eggs. Um, and it's, again, not a big deal. But if I'm seeing uh, three, four eggs in a cell and they're off to the side because the workers can't reach the bottom of the cell quite right uh, like a queen can. Um, you could have a potential and you have a lot of cells like that. You could have what we call laying workers. Again, I'll have a video of that. Um, not a video, um, a, a photo of that in my final product for you. Um, again, this is nothing but brood. Uh, again, I've got from the from the picture back here, it looks like I have a lot of brood here. It's all as I'm looking in here, this is all uh, the queen has gone back and laid eggs in here and some of the cells, uh, most of the cells have larvae so these, that's perfectly normal. We would, if you saw something like this, you may think it's shotgun brood where it looks like you took a shotgun and shot the pattern. Again, I'll ha uh, try to have a picture of it in there uh, in your final product, just show you what shotgun brood looks like. But it kind of looks like this where there's lots of holes everywhere. Again, you just look in them. In this case, there's brood in there. Um, there's larvae and there's eggs. So again, not a big deal. And because I put my line here I'm putting it back in the order that I got it out of it. Alright so again continue on with my inspection. 
Again, I love my little light LED trick that somebody taught me years ago, and it works like a charm. Again, so I don't have to rely on the sun over my shoulders. And I, again, my trick for my, my old eyes is I use one and a half power reading glasses. Um, and I'm looking 360, I don't see the queen. I see lots of drones. I see about uh, four or five drones on here. I see uh, larvae and eggs in these empty cells. I do not see wax moths or small high beetles. I don't see uh, any miscolored larvae. And if you see um, larvae that look like they're melted, um, then that could be an indication of a severe varroa mite inspection. Or excuse me, varroa, varroa mite. Uh, that's what I get for being in a hurry. Uh, a severe varroa mite infestation. The other thing I'm doing is I'm scanning the bees themselves. Um, if you see workers, typically, if you see them with uh, what we call deformed wings, uh, kind of like if you were to take a lighter and you run it past plastic, you know how it kind of shrivels up. That happens to wings of the bees. But what that's caused by is by the varroa mite. Um, and and uh, the varroa mite, the varroa um, is a transports a virus, we call it deformed wing virus, uh, and causes the bee's uh, wings to shrivel up. All right, so on this frame, I'm looking around. I don't see any queen cells yet. That's another thing I'm looking for. Depending on where you see the queen cells, it depends on what to do as far as a management perspective. Uh, so if I saw a queen cell, a queen cell looks like a peanut hanging down on the fr front of the frame. It also be on the margins, um, either the sides or the bottom. So if I saw a queen cell, uh, depending on where it is, uh, so if it's on the top half of the uh, frame and there's only a few of them, that is a supersedure cell. So what the bees are doing is they're saying, hey, we don't like this queen for some reason and we're going to kill her and replace her. So what they do is they ball her, they uh, form a ball around her and they kill her by heat and by suffocation. Uh, and then they replace her with that with that supersedure cell. The first uh, queen to emerge is going to find her rival sisters and then uh, fight it out to death with them. Um, so I don't see them there. If you find a queen cell on the bottom margins or on the sides or on the lower third, some books will say, depending on which book you read, some books will say the lower half. Um, but most books say the lower third if you see a queen cell on the face of the frame uh, on the lower third or on the margins. That is a swarm cell. So what causes a swarm cell is when it gets too crowded or congested in the brood chamber, the workers will sense that and they go, hey, we need to make a swarm. We need to create another queen. Uh, and then when that happens, they'll draw them out, they'll cap them. And then shortly before or after the first virgin emerges, the mother queen will leave with roughly 50% of the colony. We call that a swarm. And the first virgin that pops out again will look for her rival sisters and then kill them or fight it out to death. All right. Uh, so on this frame so far, I see what we call a queen cup. Excuse me, girl. The other way you can get bees to move out of your way, besides blowing on them or putting smoke, is if you just lightly tap on the top of them, they'll get the hint and move them out. So in this case, I'm going to check this queen cup. So I just lightly touch the bees and then I'm going to look or blow them. They still didn't get the hint. So I'm looking in the bottom of this acorn shaped cell and that's called a queen cup as long as it's empty. As soon as you see something in there, either an egg with or without uh, royal jelly around it, uh, or if you see a larvae in there with royal jelly, we call that a queen cell even though it's still small because again they're raising a queen in there and eventually they will draw that out into a peanut, a long peanut shape, roughly about an inch long queen cell. And then when the queen emerges, she's going to cut a hole around the bottom, the tip of that upside down cell and kind of uh, treat it like a, like a submarine escape hatch. She's going to flip it open and then she's going to crawl out. Um, what you will see also is about 24 hours prior to the queen emerging, the, the workers can sense that she's about to emerge and they will go actually help her out and they'll chew down that wax on the very tip of it. And if you see chewed down wax on the tip of a queen cell, you know you've got about 24 hours to react before or less uh, to react to a queen coming out. So you can make quickly make a queen cell split if you wanted to, put the whole frame or cut the queen cell out and put them in a frame. Uh, that's why again I have a plastic tote 
and a complete hive ready to go in case I need it. So in this case, I see nothing in here that's alarming. I do see some drone cells. You, again, you won't be able to sell, see it that far away. Blow them, get them out of the way. But they, they stick up further. They're wider cells. And again, they look like bullets. Um, again, you're not going to see it that far away, so I'm not going to talk about it too much. All right. All right, so again, I put this back in. Again, the bees are kind of in my way a little bit, so again, I'm just going to lightly smoke them. Again, preferably upwind so that it drifts down upon them. And you see that they quickly get out of the way. All right, so again, I'm just not banging things around. I'm just being a little quicker. Um, all right, so I pull it up, do my 360. No queen, no queen, no queen. Again, I'm not worried if I don't see the queen because I've already seen eggs. I know that they can make an emergency queen should they need to. Again, I'm seeing nice pearly white larvae. I'm not seeing any deformed wings. I'm not seeing any melted larvae. I'm not seeing any um, high beetles, wax moths, or discolored larvae. I'm not smelling any old cheese or anything like that. Uh, the other thing we're looking for is called American Fowl Brood, and what it looks like, it's, it looks like greasy caps, kind of like if you were to take grease um, or like vegetable and pour it on top of the caps, it kind of give a dark greasy appearance, and you'd see small perforations in the cappings. Uh, you would also smell, remember it's telling you use your senses, you would also smell something uh, that uh, smells like um, rotted meat. So in this case, again, I don't see anything. I've got sun actually over my shoulder now, so I'm seeing most of these cells are uh, filled with larvae. So again, it's a good, good thing to see. And I think I've, I can hear my phone ringing in the background. Um, again, I don't see this. Yeah, I didn't look at this side. I can see eggs for sure on this side. Again, doing a 360, don't see anything. Don't smell anything. This is a good frame. All right, so again, I put it back in the order I got it from. And I move on to the next one. Excuse me, girls. Excuse me, girls. So not only am I looking for small high beetle larvae, or adults, I'm also looking for the larvae. They look like uh, small grubs. Um, wax moths and small high beetles uh, larvae look very similar. Um, and I forget which one's a little larger, but again, it's basically a very small larvae. Um, the other thing I'm seeing real quick, uh, again, I'll have a photo in my final product for you. Um, I'm seeing some bees that look like they have a um, slick back, really gray hairs to them. That's a very new bee, uh, especially if it has kind of like a wet appearance to it. That is a brand new bee. It's been out within the next, last few days. As the workers uh, get older, then you're going to see that they, the hair on their thorax, remember a bee has, honeybee has three parts, a head, a thorax, thorax is where the wings and legs attach, and then you have an abdomen, their tail. Um, so head, thorax, abdomen. On their thorax, as they get older, they literally wear those hairs off as they come in and out of the hive. Um, so again, uh, just kind of a neat fact, if you see something that's with uh, gray hairs on it, that is a young bee. Again, so I flip this around. Don't see the queen, don't see the queen. Don't see the queen yet. Not a big deal. And again, if you get a mass of bees, you just blow on it, just make sure that uh, the queen's not under there. Um, again, they could be her attendants. In this case, I don't see them. Only saw the wing, one uh, queen cup so far. So again, no swarm cells. No supersedure cells, so I'm looking good. I just inspected this colony about four days ago. So, um, again, you generally want to inspect a, a hive uh, about every uh, 10 days to stay ahead of the swarm season if you want to. Uh, remember, it takes um, 16 days from a queen to merge, go from egg to emerging as an adult. So you want to stay ahead of that, that schedule. If you are a... A uh, brand new beekeeper, I'm going to keep this over here because I see the queen now. Um, if you're a brand new beekeeper, we recommend that you generally stay, again, every 10 days, but preferably to stay on an easy schedule while you learn what's right and what's wrong. Basically, pick a day, like every Saturday, 
and go out there every seven days, every Saturday or every Sunday and inspect your colonies. That way you learn uh, what rights and what wrong looks like. Uh, we generally recommend that you start off with at least two colonies. That way if something's wrong and you're not quite sure what you're looking at and you, if you don't have a mentor around, you could compare one colony against the other. The other thing you can do is you can uh, pull resources from one colony and give them to the weaker colony. Uh, so if I need more food or more brood, I'm going to first check make sure that there's no, that no queen on the donor frame, and then I'm going to get that frame to the weaker colony. Um, all right, now since, I, like I said, I saw for sure, I, I saw my queen, and I do not mark my queens. It's personal preference, but I don't mark my queens because sometimes when you mark a queen, the workers will sense something's wrong with her, and they can kill her. Uh, about three years ago, I had a very good laying queen and I was teaching a mentee or a student uh, how to mark a queen and I marked her and I came back four days later and she was dead. Um, they didn't like her and they killed her. They thought something was wrong with her and killed her so I lost a very good queen. Uh, the advantage to it though is that uh, new beekeepers can quickly tell uh, and spot their queen. So again in this case I saw the queen on here. I've kept once I spot the queen, I generally try to keep her over top of a box so that way she falls off, she's going to go right back into her box. So in this case, so as I've got her, I'm going to, what, what I call isolating, I take her frame and I put it in a spare box and where it's, no, that frame is nowhere near any other frame. So I could actually put a couple more frames in this box should I choose to, but I'm keeping her frame away from the walls and away from the other frame so that it minimizes her ch the chances of her running to another frame or to the side walls. So what that allows me to do is to quickly, now that I've got a positive identification of her, I could actually speed up my colonies. If I kill a few bees in this, yeah, it sucks to be those bees, I'm sorry to say that, but I could actually speed up my colonies. The whole reason of going slow is to not kill the queen by lifting up a frame and rolling her and crushing her. Um, I could actually speed up this process now because I've seen, especially since I've seen the eggs anyway, and I've got at least three frames of bees. Um, so I, I can actually speed the process up. Again, I've got good sunlight now. So again, now it's all I'm looking for since I know the queen's on that frame uh, that I just isolated. I can simply uh, look for diseases and eggs, uh, small high beetles, wax moths, American fowl brood, European fowl brood. Uh, Nozema, I remember I was telling you about at the beginning of the video that um, if I saw a lot of poop on the outside, I'm also looking for a lot of poop on top of the frames. In this case, I don't see any of that, so I'm good to go. Uh, Nozema is caused by a microsporidian. Um, and again, those of you who are going through the Master Beekeeping Program, for your journeyman and higher levels, journeyman, master, or master craftsman, you will actually need to know the scientific name for those as well, as well as the treatments for it. All right, so again, I'm inspecting this is nothing but honey and um, bee bread and bees. So again, no brood, so I'm good to go here. All right, so again, now remember when I did this, I noticed the queen was three frames from the end, so I'm gonna put her back, this brood, to keep the messing up the brood, I'm gonna put her back in there. Because I don't have room now, because I've kind of put this frame off to the side, um, I'm now gonna put it over there. I just remember the queen's here. Again, so I'll put her back in her place. I don't know why I put this frame over here. I was talking. All right, so again, I just put it in here. And as I, if I move a frame close to the other, I'm just kind of making sure, looking down, make sure I'm not pinching a bee between the two in bar tabs. Same thing over here. If I do, I just blow on it, not a big deal. All right, so now I'm all the way to the bottom of my box. All right, if I've got burr comb on the side, I can simply take my hive tool here. You can see that I've got some burr comb on this one. I just simply flick it off, um, not a big deal. I like to go all the way to the bottom of my bottom board, because that's typically where you will find adult small hive beetles or the uh, hive beetle larvae hanging out, as well as on the sides of the, the frames um, as they're going through trying to look for cocoons, um, or, or uh, I'm sorry, uh, as they're looking for pollen and honey. So this is a slatted rack. Um, it's a very good tool. I have them on all my colonies. Um, and there is a right way and wrong way to put this on. I'll explain it here in a minute. 
but you see the bees are boiling out now, that's actually a good sign. So what a slatted rack does, it creates dead space underneath this and it has a solid piece of wood at the top uh, toward the front and what that does, that encourages the queen to lay eggs uh, further down on the bottom frames. See the girls are kind of getting mad now because uh, they can't find their queen. Um, so again, there's a right way and a wrong way to put it. Um, you'll see that there's a larger gap uh, on one side so it's deeper and on the other side it's shallower. So I want the part that has the solid wood up front toward the front of the hive and I want the deeper portion facing down so it creates more dead space. What that does is it helps keep the, the hive or the colony uh, cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter because it's all that dead space in there that the air has got to interact with. Alright, so again I put this down um, and now I'm starting to look at the uh, bottom board and what I'm looking for here is I'm looking where the vertical part meets the horizontal portion and what I'm looking for is the small hive beetles crawling around. If I see a bunch of bees scurrying after something, like there's a small hive beetle, uh, so I, I caught it by my eyes from the bees chasing around, so I simply uh, try to get this small hive beetle, so they're chasing it, you can't see it over there, so I just kind of scoot the bees out of the way. You got to remember that this small hive beetle can fly, uh, so again, once I get it, I simply pin it down and roll my hive tool through it, drag my hive tool through it, and that's the best way to trap them and kill them. Uh, I've got a dead bee, so I'm actually going to help her out so the caretaker bees don't have to work as hard. Again, to get the bees out of the way, I simply blow on them a little bit, and they'll get the hint, and they'll move out of the way. Uh, there's another hive beetle. And again, if, I was telling you about to use your senses, and I got her too. Um, if you smell something that smells like rotten oranges, that is an indication of small hive beetles. Um, so what they do is they go through the honey and the pollen, and as they, they do this, they leave this slime trail behind, and it smells, it causes the honey to spoil. Um, you can't use it, you can't feed it back to them. Um, basically, it's usable, uh, not, not usable at all, and it uh, ferments and creates a, a smell, it smells like rotten um, oranges. Again, I got another small high beetle crawling along, bees are chasing it. Uh, the bees, the honeybees, because of the small high beetle, you can see where I smashed her uh, and killed her. Um, the honeybees um, will uh, chase them into a corner or into one of, in one of these uh, small hive beetle traps because the exoskeleton on the small hive beetle is too hard for them to penetrate with their sting or, or to uh, bite through with their mandibles. Uh, so it's all they can do is they can trap it in one corner. If you don't have a beetle trap where they can get it, the hive beetle goes in there and think it's safe and it drowns. What the honeybees will do, they'll actually corner it and then they will uh, bite at its legs, um, if it can get to its legs, and then they'll encapsulate it with propolis uh, and basically create a beetle gel of their own. Un unfortunately, the honeybees are a generous host, uh, so if a high beetle uh, rubs its antennas on the honeybee, the honeybees are gracious enough to feed the high beetles. Why they do that, I don't know, but again, it's a freak of nature, they will uh, feed the high beetle. Again, so I don't see um, more high beetles. Um, and I don't see any larvae. If you did uh, a thing where you combine the weak colony with a strong colony, you need to go back in uh, on all the way to the bottom and after uh, you've made sure that the queen, after about uh, a week, you want to go in there and clean out all the newspaper debris that's in the bottom. And the reason for that is, is that the small high beetle larvae love to get underneath that, those paper shreds um, and hide out. So again, now I'm going to put this thing back in order. Again, I'll just one final check, make sure I don't have small high beetles. Again, so I'm going to place this down. I'm going to go up and down gently in small things, uh, up and down motions, so that I don't have any uh, bees trapped underneath them or as, as little as I can. So I'm going to center it as much as I can. Remember I was telling you about once I've got, um, I use a, a regular eight frame box because I've got an eight frame setup. The beauty of this system is, as I can now, instead of putting this empty box that I had earlier, Instead of putting those in here, I can now take this box, lift it up, and then place it with its frames on here, and I got most of those in there. If you got an old back, then you're probably going to want to put the, uh, or a bad back, you want to, you might want to put an empty box on here and just put a frame in it at a time or two. So again, I raise it up, raise it down, raise it up, raise it down. What that does, if you do get a bee that's trapped under it, she feels that box touch her, uh, she'll run out. She'll get out of its way. Again, try not to kill any bees. Uh, if you can, but that's okay. 
All right, so I've centered the box as best I can. So it's nice and pretty. The other thing I was telling you about is use your senses. So if you can hear it from there, you I want to put my mic a little closer. You can hear it this box is very noisy because what's happening is the bees can tell fairly quickly that hey we don't have our queen because her pheromones aren't being spread around the the box All right, my battery's dying, so I'm gonna have to hurry up a little bit. So it's all I've done is I put the queen in here, um, and now I'm gonna simply take another frame, and I'm gonna slide these frames over as best as far as I can, and then I'm going to slide this in straight. All right, um, and then I'm gonna gently move everything over to one side. If I found her on an earlier frame, say frames three or four back, I'll put her frame back in. I have all this empty space and I put another frame next to it so that I protect her and then I can be a little faster with putting all the other frames in um, so now I want to put this beetle trap back in again because that one's going to be um, this is on my left side so I'm gonna make sure I put this in again just put it in an angle put it in reconstructing the colony the hive as best I can all right periodically you need to make sure that you uh, reach over and pop do your smoker to keep the flame going. In this case, I didn't do that, and my flames, my smoke's just about out. Again, not a big deal. This is a very calm colony. All right, so now I simply put this beetle trap because that one's on the left side. I put this one on the right side, gently put it in. And now this is mostly full of honey. Excuse me, girls. The other thing you can do is you can lay the equipment if you don't have a spare body. You can simply lay the equipment on top of each other at an angle, and that will also now the smoker's going pretty good. So I'm going to smoke them to get them down. Again, there's not a lot of smoke coming out. That's why I'm puffing a little bit more. All right, so I got the bees out of the way. All right, so again, this is quite heavy because uh, roughly eight pounds per frame on a deep. Again, up, down, up, down, up, down. And I didn't crush any bees, so that's a good thing. All right, so next thing I want to do is I want to put my honey super because that's what I'm running. Oh, you bear. They had this propolis and it stuck to my uh, hype top. Again, so I'm in a rush because my battery's about to die. All right, so from here, if I had bees, I can simply tap them in. Again, I'm not as worried about being as nice to them now because I've already done my inspections. So I don't have to worry about making them mad because they're closing up. I put my feeder back on top then I put my hive top back on then lastly what I do is I put a full red brick on top just to let me know that I've seen either queen or eggs and then if I had seen queen cells I would then take a red brick half red brick and also put it on top of the hive to let me know that, hey, I've got queen cells in here. I need to make uh, be paying attention to those. All right, so that is how you do a hive inspection. That is my technique to doing it. When you do a hive inspection, now that I've got a little bit more time, um, you want to inspect the hive with a systematic approach and have a purpose. So as you notice, I did a systematic approach and I circled, did completely around the frame, and it's very systematic in the way I put the frames in, how I took them out, how I searched for things. And when you have a systematic approach, it's going to allow you uh, to go through the, as you get more and more experience, you're gonna be able to go through and do an inspection faster. A new beekeeper is typically gonna take about 30, 45 minutes per colony to do an inspection. A very seasoned beekeeper might do it as little as five or 10 minutes. Uh, most of us are somewhere in between. Um, but again, if you get a systematic approach to it, it will help you get faster and it will help you identify things quicker. Hey, that doesn't look right. Oh, oh there's a small high beetle or 
again, if you have a system. The other thing is you want to have a purpose. Don't be going into a hive and doing an inspection without a purpose. Now for a new beekeeper, that's out the window because you're, you're learning your, in, your purpose is to do, learn what's right and what's wrong in a hive. But uh, a, in, an inspection in the winter months or the cold months is very different than one that's in the summer. So in the winter months, I might simply come up and lift up the hive top and look and see how their food, their food stores are or see where the brood pattern is. Um, and again, uh, in the summer months, I may be wanting to check for queen cells, especially during a swarm cell, uh, swarm season, I may pull out frames. Again, remember, I generally don't pull out frames unless it's 64 degrees or higher, not raining. Um, and then the same thing in the cold months, I generally do not inspect the hive, again, 64 or higher. And the reason for that is, is when it gets to be 57 degrees, the bees are going to form a ball in around those frames to protect the brood and the queen when the temperature gets to be 57 degrees or colder. Don't be a l surprised if you see bees flying around and it's only uh, 42 to 46 degrees out because they're out doing bathroom flights. We call them cleansing flights. So it's normal, especially in cold weather, to see some of those poop on the outside because the girl's got to go when a girl's got to go. So she'll fly out. Uh, and use bathroom. Sometimes she didn't make it all the way. She'll get out and, and poop on the, on the uh, landing board as she goes out. Uh, again, not a big deal. Again, just remember where you are. Now, if she does it during the summertime, then that's first indication potentially of Nozema. It looks like I'm just about beating this rain. So uh, with that, I'm going to shut down. Thank you for watching if you've stayed this long, um, and I have more videos coming. Thank you very much.